That song is representative to the message I want to bring to you this morning, which is called Jesus' Heart. Jesus' Heart, and we just sang about Him calling, and He calls us because He loves. He is love. He has a heart full of love and a heart full of compassion, and He has that heart of love and that heart of compassion And most of all, for the Bible says, the least of these, those that are broken, those that are hurting. And we sang about that in that song this morning. And this morning as we sit here, um, nobody is beyond the reach or the scope of his calling. No one is beyond the scope or the reach of his love doesn't matter how, um, how much we feel like we might be, we're not. Because the Bible says that his arm is not short and that anyone can be reached and he wants us to be reached. So, you know, I see in the Gospels a lot of times that he is talking to people and he is compelling them to come to him. He's compelled with kindness, he's compelled with love, and he puts that into action. So this morning, um, we're going to ask him to bless the reading of his word, and I'm going to put into action what he's asked me to share with you, and then many of you have just put yourself into action, and I pray that you'll continue in that frame of mind, in that frame of worship as we go through this morning. So, Lord God, we come to you because this this is your whole plan. This is your world. You want us to be your people. And we're trying to do it your way. That should be all of our desires, to do it your way. Have thy will be done. So we come to you today. Lord, you've already moved me deeply this morning, starting at the very moment I walked through the door here. Your spirit has been evident. It's been moving. It's been answering. It's been building up. It's been encouraging. It's been loving. And Father, we're so thankful for that. And we thank you for allowing us to know that you are real. Not because your word says it, but because we see you in our lives manifesting yourself in all the ways that your word said that you would. You're changing us. And Lord, you take the things that we think are big and you trample them under your feet because everything is small compared to who you are and your love. And Lord, the things that we think we can't overcome... Lord, you just speak a word and it moves. So, Lord, I pray today that that's how we will approach your word. That nothing's too big and that with God all things are possible. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, a very familiar verse comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now as we think about that verse and we want to unpack that verse We're going to skip ahead to that next chapter in John. So if you will, turn with me to the Gospel of John chapter 4 this morning. And I'd like to read verses 1 through 10, verses 13 through 18, before we begin to speak about a passage of Scripture that's very familiar to us because it's not been too long since I preached this. Um, But God gave me something different to say about it today. So, if you will, let's listen to what the Word of God says. 
In John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, and in parentheses in my Bible, it says, Though Jesus himself did not baptize, but it was his disciples. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. Now, when we think about how Jesus comes up with what he's going to do next or what God's going to do next in our life, sometimes I think we look at it like this scripture reads. He was going to Galilee and we think, well, he could have gone perhaps different ways to Galilee. But it says in verse 4, but he needed to go through Samaria. And the reason why he does things are unknown to us many times. Because if he were standing with us, talking to us and saying, hey boys, we're going back down to Galilee. Ladies, we're going to Galilee. And we were hearing him talk about it. We would just think, okay. He has somebody in Galilee that needs to know what he's talking about. So this is the next stop on his teaching tour. He's taking us down to Galilee. But the Bible makes a point there that there was a place called Samaria where he needed to be. He needed to go there. He didn't say why he needed to go there at the time. But he said, we've got to go through Samaria. And it says, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, I want you to see that what God does, he contemplates things. He is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. So he knew who he was going to Samaria to see before he got there. He knew today, before we got here to Friendly Community Baptist Church, what our worship was going to be like. He knew the songs that were going to be sung. He knew the people that were going to be here to worship this morning. And he knew exactly what needed to be said to move you. And he knows exactly what you're sitting there with right now struggling with. And he knows what you're sitting there most joyful about. He already knows. So he knew that he was going to go to Samaria. He knew that there was a specific reason. And it says here that now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus therefore being wearied from his journey sat thus by the well. And it was about the sixth hour. In comes the reason. Jesus cares for the least. He cares for the broken, and He cares for the hurting. I fall into all three of those categories all the time in my life. I have not got any of those three mastered. If we were all honest, none of us have. That's why we need to run at Jesus hard. He loves us. He cares for us. He redeems us. He changes us. But we, all, we must always see ourselves as He sees us. Because if we don't, we stop doing the ministry. We stop loving. We stop caring when we don't see ourselves the way Jesus sees us. So a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, And who it is who says to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
Now, I want you to see in this scripture, first of all, as we're unpacking this, that there is no one beyond God's reach or beyond God's mercy. Okay? Internalize that this morning. This Samaritan woman was in the place of the least of these. She was not a person of stature because she was just, in those days, a lowly woman who came to the well to draw water, probably for her family. And in biblical days, a woman had no say. So she was there doing her chore, probably because she was told that this is what she must do, and this was part of what she did as her charge. She carried a lot on her shoulders as she came to this well. And we can only imagine what she's carrying. Now, let me just share with you why the Samaritan name was a bad thing. So, more than likely, during the time of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the people of this area were taken away by the Babylonians. And when the people of God, the Jewish people, were taken away from this area... What happened was other countries that the Babylonians had overcome or conquered were the people who became the Samaritans. And they took that people that they had conquered, moved them from their lands where they were comfortable, what they called home, and they moved them right in the middle of where the Jews lived. And they placed them there. A group of Gentile people right into the midst of the Jewish people, into that area of the land. So what you have is God's people got taken off to Babylon. Babylon conquered a place where the Samaritans were, moved the Samaritan people right into where the Jews were, and pretty much put a group of people that God said, don't mix with these people because they're not of pure blood. They're not Jewish. Don't marry into them. Don't become a part of their family or their life because I want you to keep yourself holy. I want you to keep yourself pure. So the Jews looked at the Samaritan people as they, they were the scourge of the earth. They didn't belong. They were not worthy. They were the least of these as they lived in this area. Now I want you to see what Jesus' heart is. It's a heart of compassion, isn't it? Because we know that when Jesus came, he came to fulfill a different way than what we read about in the Old Testament. This woman that was there at the well, she was probably several generations of her family had lived in that area. They knew everything that the Jews knew. They knew all about their Messiah. They knew about their God. But they didn't know Jesus. So as she has come to the, the well, she is not of pure blood. She is a Gentile. And she asked Jesus, even in that scripture, why are you talking to me? Because Jews do not talk to Samaritans, much less a man talk to a woman in that time. So as we sit here today, we need to understand that no one is beyond the reach of his love, and His mercy. No one. No matter whether it's us witnessing to someone else or whether you're sitting here under my word this morning wondering if you're worthy of it. You are worthy of His love. You are worthy of His mercy. Now, I also want you to see this. Anyone who receives Him can and will be saved. Anyone who receives him can and will be saved. Now, I want you to see in this next scripture, verses 13 through 18, what it says. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. 
But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. You all know what that fountain of water springing up into everlasting life is? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit of God. It is the fountain of water that's springing up to everlasting in us. And that's what he wants to give to each and every one that he calls. And he says to the woman here in this, these words, and she said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have said well. I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. Now, I want you to internalize this this morning a little different. Not only was this woman the least of these because of her group of people and how she was born a woman into this time period but she was also broken at this period of time there was only one reason why this woman would have had five husbands one she's looking for love she's looking for acceptance she's looking for joy but two there's a reason why she doesn't have them anymore Either they have left her as property they don't want anymore, or they've died. Now you think about that. If you were in her place, a woman that can only make it in a world where she's got others taking care of her, she's had five husbands. Either they didn't want her, or they died and left her struggling with life and now she's with a man that don't love her enough to commit to her and he's just using her as a woman in his life because Jesus said you're with one and you're not even married to her to him imagine what this woman must be feeling ladies inside of her right now as she's at this well think about how broken she really is it's hard enough to lose the love of your life. But she has lost five loves. Either by their choice or because it's the end of their life. And death of a husband and wife is a hard thing. It is. There's people in here that's experienced that. So she is not only the least of these that Jesus came to seek and save, but she's also one that's hurting and is broken as she's come to this well. And he's wanting to give her living water. This morning, it's no different. He looks at us the same way that he looked at that woman. And that's how he wants us to go out if we know him he wants us to go out to those who are broken, those who are poor, those who are in need, those that aren't like us, the same that Jesus went to, he wants us to go. Right into the midst of the folks that are broken and those that are hurting. And this morning is yet another plea to you as a church family. Will you go? As Jesus went, knowing how you would have felt like this lady or how she must have felt. And other people are out there in our daily life that feel the same way. And they're just waiting for someone to bring light into their situation because darkness and light cannot exist in the same place. And Jesus is just waiting for us to take the light there too. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and... Maybe what we're turning on for you today 
is the light, the light of His love. And then the last thing I want to share with you about her this morning is this. She was hurting. She was definitely hurting. In her life, because she had had five husbands and because she was now with one and he had not married her yet, she showed that she had a desire to be accepted and to be loved. And this, to be pursued. Do you remember whenever you were dating the person that you're married to? How you pursued that person? Because you wanted that person to be with you? I mean, you put in some hot pursuit for that person. I even ran from the police one time just to be with Julie. Sorry, Jerry, but I did. I deserved a ticket, and I was a heathen. <laughs> and I, was, I wanted to be there with her to go out on that date so bad that I did everything I could to hide because I was pursuing her. That was just wrong, wasn't it, honey? But I pursued her also so, so hard that her daddy said, boy, he said, nobody was turning in our driveway from the way you came until you started coming. You done wore my grass out coming in my driveway. She wanted to be pursued. She had a need to be pursued. And guess what? Jesus pursued her. Last week, I asked for a show of hands in this sanctuary of people who were being drawn by Jesus, yet they had not yet allowed Him to be their Lord. And there were hands that came up that showed me that Jesus is still pursuing people. He pursued me and He pursued you. And He also shows her in this story that He was not going to abandon her. Because she was important to him. In fact, his words were, he wanted to give her living water. And he also wanted to give it to others. So I want you to look here at the end of this story with me. From verses 39 through 42. Chapter 4. It says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him. Because of the word of the woman who testified. Now this woman came to the well in need, but she left the well differently. And because of that, what we're getting ready to read in this scripture can happen to you today. And it can happen to those that the Lord puts in your path that you choose to show light to. It says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. She said, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. Jesus said that he didn't have a place to stay. Instead, he said, Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He went into a place where he wasn't supposed to be accepted because of the people group he came from. And he ended up being such a friend to them that he got to stay for two days in their homes and with them. Can you imagine if Christianity was like that today? Could you imagine if this afternoon after church, and this, it happens, folks, it happens. Could you imagine if you just left the church and you went to Piggly Wiggly to get you some lunch after church and you noticed someone sitting over by the railroad depot? And you just decided you're going to park your car and you're going to just walk over there 
Just take the time to walk over there and say, sure is a nice evening we're having, isn't it? Start a conversation with a person. Maybe sit down on the park bench up there on the platform and just start talking to that person. And find out that that person feels like they're nobody. Perhaps that person has just lost the love of their life. Find out that they think, I'm just not good enough to get saved. As you talk. But as you're there with them, and you feel within your spirit that this person needs Jesus. And because they need Jesus, Jesus needs me to give Jesus to them. I need to be with this person. That not only do you have a sit down with them today, but you say, can you meet me somewhere tomorrow? And maybe you go have lunch with this person tomorrow and buy their lunch. And then by that time, they're falling so much in love with you that they want to take you home and introduce you to the rest of their children. Or perhaps someone else that lives in the home with them. And because of that, you become so blessed because you see God working through you and in you to not only give that person opportunity to know Him, but also to build a relationship with someone that you had never met before in your life and to see that there is still common good in humanity and that Jesus makes it better. He wants all of us on mission with Him just that way. And that's what He did. That's what we read in these biblical stories about Jesus. Most of the time, people are ministered to when we simply stop and ask them, How you doing? And stay to listen to their answer. What do people say to you most of the time if you walk up to them and say, how you doing? Good, fine, or if or what, nobody wants to listen, right? But what if you stayed and listened? See, Jesus was at that well, one, because he was thirsty, humanly. But it was his agenda to be there for her so that he could reach out to the rest of all of these people. Because look how this ends up. It says here in these last verses again. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you have said, for we ourselves have heard him. And we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. People come to know Jesus on that day, over the next two days, because of His love for the least of these, for the broken, and for the hurting. This morning, Jesus simply looks through the darkness and the pain of what we're going through, and he invites us all to come for a drink. So that's his word this morning. There's two things at play in this word this morning. One, do you need a drink of the water? Because he says if you drink of his water, you will never hunger or thirst again. You'll have everlasting life, You'll have the Holy Spirit of God walking with you through your daily walk. And He will take care of you in every situation of your life. According to the riches in Jesus Christ and His glory. Not always the way that we think we should be taken care of. I've prayed with several people this week that had ideas of what they needed. But what did we pray about? what his need was for them and that they could accept it. He offers that this morning. But the other thing at play this morning is this. 
boldly, raise your hand if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, go ye into the world, share the gospel. And the ones that Jesus most shared the gospel with was people just like this woman who came to the well. And that's a little harder than the people that we surround ourselves with all the time that seem to be in the same situation as us. So as we stand to our feet this morning, will you be that man or woman that will share? Or do you need a drink? If you need a drink of that water, I'm right here to pray with you this morning. And if there's a line of people that need that drink of water, I'll get other people to come up here and pray with you as well. But I want you to be real with yourself. First, you've got to have a desire to care for that woman at the well. Perhaps that's the first step for you this morning. Because sometimes, as people, we make things too complex because we try... To start at the beginning, and we, we try to make everything happen all at once and see how it's going to happen. See the final result. But that's not how Jesus works. He does all kinds of wonderful things. He said, let's go to Galilee. And in the midst of going to Galilee, he turned it into all of what we just read. Three days of people coming to know him that had hurt in their life. So maybe the first thing you need to pray for today is just a desire to go to Galilee. And then let Him teach you as you're going there what He would have you to do along the way. So as the music plays this morning, you do as the Lord lays on your heart. Pray whatever prayer you need to pray.